Spiritual Teaching 271 Love Each Other 1. I bless you people, in you I bless future generations. 2. I contemplate that you have become contaminated with the evils of the world, that like all weak beings you have also become sick, but I come to purify you because a great, noble and delicate spiritual mission awaits you. 3. In my word I have named you Israel, and when you have heard that name you have shuddered under the weight of a responsibility that you had never imagined owning. 4. That name made you wake up and since then you stopped feeding yourself frivolous, superfluous or bad satisfactions, to sustain the heart and spirit with hearty, wholesome, clean delicacies. 5. You are changing low passions for true love, you are leaving insane pleasures for spiritual satisfactions, and all this, which is regeneration and purification, has given sensitivity to your heart and has allowed the dormant powers of the spirit to begin to manifest in your life. 6. When my word has reached your understanding, like a ray of the sun when it illuminates a room, you have concluded by confessing that only with love towards the Father and towards your brothers can your spirit be nourished. 7. This is how the light is being made in this people destined to initiate the age of spirituality. That is why I tell you, that once you have won this battle over yourselves, no longer descend, no longer take a single step back. 8. When you begin to stop feeling your own pain to feel the sufferings of others, you will be giving a new step on the path of my doctrine. 9. These are the times announced by the prophets to humanity, in which the pain will become very bitter and later disappear and slowly become peaceful. 10. Humanity mostly ignores my arrival and my presence as the spirit of consolation, but within its being he senses something and waits for me. 11. This people will give men the certainty of my new manifestation. That's the reason why I'm pouring out on your spirit my light. 12. No more hesitation, people, no more doubts or disobedience. Let faith and trust rule your whole being. 13. Do not flee from the trials of life, because they are lessons that you must learn. Know that you have been sent at this time to refine your spirit in the performance of a lofty, noble, and dignified mission. 14. Do not leave your fulfillment for later, claiming that today you have many obstacles to follow me, that you are better off waiting for the sun of tomorrow to fully illuminate your path to rise up to the fight. 15. See how the light of the Divine Spirit falls incessantly on your spirit so as not to let you fall or sleep. 16. Sometimes I surprise you in the silence of your meditations by asking yourself, why such great duties towards humanity? And I tell you, that your question comes from the fact that you ignore your spiritual past, and therefore, debts that you have contracted with your brothers. 17. When the certainty of your responsibility towards the peoples of the earth is absolute, you will take with great love your cross and you will begin to serenely climb the mountain of your spiritual elevation. 18. From your memory the past can be erased, from your spirit the previous existences will become distant, but the book of life where everything is written down by God, nothing remains in the past, nothing is erased or forgotten, there everything is present and alive eternally. 19. This is the justice of the Father, perfect, loving. 20. When man is lost and sinks in the mire of the world, I pour out my charity on him and save the spirit. When you believe that your works on earth have irretrievably lost you for eternal life, the divine judge gives you an opportunity to repair your mistakes, thus achieving salvation through effort, will and perseverance in the good. 21. Now you have that blessed opportunity, you can meditate on all this and strive to fulfill your mission so that when you return to that valley from where the spirits depart to inhabit the material world, you will arrive without charges and unfulfilled missions and instead you can experience the true joy of having triumphed over smallness and rudeness of the body in which you lived. 22. Your spirit is awake as never before, for that reason I tell you, that of the steps that you take in this time, you will be responsible, since the period in which I gave you my teachings was very long and the word in which I gave you my lessons. 23. Do not forget that in the most solemn moments and in the hours of greatest importance is when temptation stalks you more, when the heart weakens and the spirit falls, when doubts, uncertainties and indecisions arise. 24. Be inspired by the purity of my work. Ask yourselves, 
What is it that can most please your father? What is it that you are doing well and what are you doing wrong? 25. Scrutinize your own works before judging those of others and you will see infinity of imperfections that had gone unnoticed before your eyes for lack of study and love. 26. You will cast out from your bosom everything that is fanaticism, idolatry, superstition, materiality and superfluous practices and useless. It will be as if you were cleaning the earth of weeds and then sowing it with beautiful wheat. 27. Take advantage of the time you still have to listen to my teaching, so that it fills you with light and grace, so that you take the firm step towards spirituality, a step that you have not taken because you have continued within a cult full of materialism and errors. 28. Until now you have lacked the faith to renounce your forms, rites and symbols and seek me spiritually in infinity. You have lacked the courage to be spiritualists and you have devised a way of pretending spirituality, hiding behind it your materiality and your mistakes. 29. I do not want you hypocrites, but sincere and lovers of the truth. That's why I speak to you with great clarity, so that you can purify your life and show the world the truth of this work. Do you call yourselves spiritualists? Well, truly be it. Do not speak of my doctrine as long as you do the opposite because you will only confuse humanity with your works. 30. First of all, have knowledge of what my work is, what my law means, what your mission is, and how you should carry it out, so that if on your path you do not have a guide worthy of leading your steps, you are guided by consciousness and for the knowledge that you have acquired in my doctrine. This way you cannot hold anyone responsible for any stumbling block or some mistake. 31. I also tell you that if he who goes with his advice guiding your spiritual steps, walks in accordance with my law, follow him faithfully, because he has made himself worthy of your trust. 32. When the time comes to hold this people to account, my voice will reach every spirit with the same justice, since my word was heard by everyone in the same way. There no one will say, Lord, claim those who know more and forgive those of us who only did what they told us. 33. Do you think that when faced with the bad example of a father on earth, vicious or evil, the son makes a mistake in not following him in his way of being? Or do you think the son is obliged to follow in the footsteps of his parents? 34. Truly I tell you, it must be consciousness and reason that guide you by the straight path. 35. But not because you stray from the bad path that those who have the duty to lead you along the life, you are going to ignore them or stop loving them, on the contrary, from the place where you find salvation, you will do your best to help those who have strayed from the route, that is, that your charity and your love should never change. 36. Try to understand my word, beloved disciples, so that you do not have to suffer indecisions when the tests surprise you. 37. Materialism, as an immense obstacle, stands in the way of the evolution of the spirit, before that wall mankind has stopped. 38. You are in a world in which man has managed to develop his understanding, applied to material science, but his reasoning about the existence of the spiritual is still clumsy. His knowledge about everything that which is not exclusive to matter is backward. 39. This century that you are living presents two phases. One, the evolution of the mind and the other, the stagnation of the spirit. 40. Truly the divine light radiates on the understandings and that is why my great inspiration whose fruits astonish humanity. It is that the mind seeks freedom and expansion. Man deepens in the study of nature, scrutinizes, discovers, recreates, is amazed, but never hesitates. But when the idea of clarifying what is spiritual has arisen in him, of the truth that lies beyond the matter that he knows, then he is fearful. He feels fear of penetrating into the unknown, in what he believes forbidden, in what belongs only to elevated beings and worthy of investigating in the arcana of God. 41. There he has been weak and clumsy, incapable of willfully overcoming the prejudices that overwhelm him. There it has been seen who is a slave to twisted interpretations. 42. The development of human intelligence will never be complete while it does not unfold on the spiritual plane. See how great is the delay of your spirit, because you have devoted yourselves to the knowledge of terrestrial life. 43. Man is a slave to the will of others, a victim of anathemas, of convictions and threats, 
but what has been achieved with it. Let him give up all his longings to understand and attain the highest knowledge that man must possess. Prevent himself from power to clarify what has absurdly always considered a mystery, the spiritual life. 44. Do you think that the life of the spirit will be an enigma for man on earth forever? If you think so, you will find yourself in a very big mistake. Truly I tell you, that while you do not know your origin and ignore everything that relates to the spirit, with all the advancement of your sciences, you will not go beyond being creatures that inhabit a small world between plants and animals, you will continue to harass each other through your wars and pain will continue to reign over your life. 45. If you do not discover what you carry in your being, nor do you discover in your fellow men the spiritual brother who in each one dwells, are you going to be able to truly love each other? No, humanity, even if you say that you know me and you continue, if you take superficially my doctrine, your faith, your knowledge, and your love will be false. 46. Today my light descends in a vibrant and inspiring way to all understanding. By manifesting myself in word through these spokesmen has become my doctrine for those who have heard it. More like all of it tends to the elevation of your spirit, I have called it spiritualism. But never stop at names or definitions, the important thing about my doctrine is the essence and the truth that it contains. 47. This is the auspicious time when the light of my word, the higher morality and the wisdom of spirituality, come to overflow on hearts, like a fresh and beneficent rain after the long desert drought that you have crossed. 48. This doctrine is perfect, as perfect was my word expressed in the second era and as each one of my inspirations. Perfection cannot be found in the understandings through which it sprouted, it comes from the divine spirit that inspired it. 49. This teaching is simple as everything that is pure, divine, and therefore easy to understand. But for you to put it into practice it will sometimes seem difficult. Works of the Spirit require effort, renunciation or sacrifice on the part of your body and when you lack education or spiritual discipline, you have to suffer. 50. Since the beginning of time there has been a struggle between spirit and matter, trying to understand what is the right thing, the lawful thing and the good thing, to make a life adjusted to the law presented by God. In the middle of that fight, it seems to you as if a strange and malevolent power was inducing you at every step away from the battle, inviting you to continue on the path of materiality, using your free will. I tell you, there is no more temptation than the fragility of your matter. Sensitive to all that surrounds you, weak to yield, easy to fall and surrender, but who has managed to dominate the impulses, passions and weaknesses of the matter, that one has overcome the temptation that in itself he carries. 51. What again does spiritualism come to teach, if the doctrine of love given by Christ in the second era showed you the way to go? I have come to make you understand that word and to explain it to you more clear and teach us to practice it spiritually. 52. The doctrine of Jesus was perfect, since it was revealed to you by the word made man, in which was hidden God. That word that in Jesus spoke to the world is the same that speaks to you now in spirit and that has come to tell you that the teaching, those works and examples that I bequeathed when I lived among you, you know and apply to your life, not because you consider yourselves highly evolved and living in a very distant time. This doctrine is perfect, as perfect was my word expressed in the second era and as each one you think my word is out of time. In spiritualism you can find the way of applying my doctrine and my examples to the era you live in and to the evolution you have. 53. Today's word differs from that of Jesus in the second era, because it is given through human spokesmen and that these understandings are limited in their conceptions, but the essence of the word out of his lips is perfect. 54. Nobody wants to see in the human matters that I use the presence of the divine, nor in his human voice the voice of God. God has no form, nor does he have the expression of a human voice like you. So when you listen to my word, you will not find God in the external expression of the human word, but in its essence. This is what I have been manifesting in all venues. 55. Again the Master is with his disciples to remind them of that divine teaching that message of love and peace I brought to humanity in the second era. 56. I have returned because these present generations have not taken my word as the norm and law of their life, and it is necessary to teach them the way with new lessons that clarify what they had not understood. 57. Man, 
subject to the impulses of his free will, marches capriciously, oblivious to many realities of life. 58. It was no longer time for there to be reigns on earth, nor strong peoples to humiliate the weak, and without there are, however, as a proof that primitive tendencies still prevail in man to weak using force and to conquer through violence. 59. Certainly I placed man on earth so that he might rule over it and reign, so that he might reign over a world of peace, understanding and harmony, in which he was an obedient and faithful prince to the king, who is his creator. 60. The kingdom that men have formed on earth is another, a kingdom of false grandeur, of vanities, of false splendors. That is why the world does not have among its greatest riches the spiritual treasures as they are peace, wisdom, and spiritual elevation. 61. Humanity yearns for a little peace, but never seeks it by the means that exist to reach it. Such they are reasoning, forgiveness, charity, reconciliation, love. 62. Now I announce to you a great, intense struggle among those who seek the establishment of the reign of peace and those who strive to defend or increase the power of their earthly kingdom. 63. The struggle between spirit and matter, the ancient battle between what is eternal and temporal, the spirit versus matter, who will beat whom? Some say the spirit, others say matter. I tell you, none will win. 64. In this battle, it is not a question of the spirit triumphing by humiliating the flesh, because if it were, its triumph would be false. The final victory will be for both, when matter and spirit united, harmonizing and fulfilling both with your destiny, march under a single ideal on the path of justice and love, which is the path traced by my law. How much harm men do themselves with their fratricidal wars. Days, months, and years go by without having a little peace of heart, living in constant distress, under threat from his own brothers turned into enemies. Is it living this or at least striving for a high ideal? No, people, men kill themselves for their human ambitions worth much less than your life, but they don't want to know the price of a life. No, they don't want to know that the existence of a man is sacred and that only the one who created it can dispose of it. 65. This same world that you now inhabit has long been a battlefield and it has not been enough for man the enormous experience bequeathed by his ancestors, bitter and painful experience that is like a book opened by the consciousness before the men of this time, but the heart of humanity is hard to accept that fruit of experience that is like a legacy of light. The only thing they have inherited from their ancestors has been hatred, pride, rancor, greed, and revenge that was transmitted in their blood. 66. It will be necessary for the earth to dress in red with the blood of many innocents and later to dress in black, with the mourning of those who survive. 67. All the kingdoms raised by men on foundations of pride and greed have fallen, because their apparently solid foundations were false and could not resist my justice. 68. These powers that now amaze humanity, you will soon see them crumble with a bang, and if after these, others rise, they will also fall. 69. When men unite their peoples and rule themselves spiritually and humanly by the laws of love and justice that the Father has revealed from the beginning of time, then they will have built the firm foundations for a reign of peace, in which there will be for the first time in the world. Harmony, brotherhood, real progress, prosperity in the spirit and in man, wisdom, science, and well-being. 70. In this dawn of grace, beloved people, Concentrate with your thoughts and examine your feelings so that you know how strong your faith is regarding the doctrine that you are receiving. 71. When you feel ready, strong enough to work for my work, get up and take my word, which will be the firm foundation of a new world, of that reign of peace and truth that I have announced to you. My peace be with you.